Hello there and welcome back to the Ottomans. Last time we, well, we ended up in the Warriors of the French. Now currently, kind of in a precarious situation. We do have manpower, we do have advantage on number of troops. But even so, we aren't in a incredibly good position. We do want to know what we want, however, which is this. And we're very close to getting that, so we'll just keep on pushing a little bit uh, longer. And hopefully, we can get what we want here. We'll see how it goes. So, we did win the Siege of the Fiend now, and also there's a very huge French army marching on me. So, what I think we'll do here is just make the peace that we want now, because we actually can. And I don't see any reason to continue this. The French are weakened, so potentially someone else might decide that, hmm, we want a piece of this and uh, go to war with them. I do doubt that though, but we'll make peace. France rejected our generous peace offer. Well, that is not good. I guess the reason is because of the fact that they are marching on this army here. Let's see, how are the terrain advantages here? Mostly plains, there are some hills and mountains, but not much. So, we'll send our troops here to, to back up more or less, and hopefully then get the uh, get the result we want in this battle. I think I'll just allow them to hit. They'll hit on the 16th. Or 24th. There we go. Then we'll just, I guess, well, join in with everything we have. And hopefully this will be enough to actually get them to accept the peace deal. So let's just send that and boom. War over. So now I have the funny job of restocking my armies more or less. Basically setting them up as I want them to be. I also of course economy sell provinces that I don't really need myself to uh, these guys. So sell Perigord and... Lang dock, hopefully. Hopefully they'll take both. If not, I'll have some trouble with the... Uh, they don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want that. They don't want anything here. Again, it's no strategic interest, which is kind of scary. They are mili... They are come administrator. That's what I forgot, and that is why I'm currently in trouble. Create vassal. Let's see here. I can't create too loose, but that's about it. The only thing... Yeah, we'll have to do that. Revolutionary War and Holy War. Well, that's an interesting combination. These guys became administrators too, which of course is a horrible, horrible thing to do to me. Because then I can't actually sell anything here. I might actually have to sell to these guys instead then. Sell very good. Just to make sure that I stick or stay below the... Uh, stay below the overextension line. We'll even sell Langdog to uh, to someone else here. Costs are hilariously high. Local nobility. So yeah. Let's see. Uh, do we want to get rid of the Gascon perhaps then? It'll bring me below 100%, but that's about it. So yeah. Let us go ahead and sell Gascon to Armagnac. I have no idea if I can actually vassalize them, but if I can, that would be great. But I wouldn't really count on that. So for now, let's just convert what can and we'll keep the troops in the area I think because if not we are definitely going to get into trouble so with that said I think I might as well just annex Gien then to simply uh, start the annexation process on both the Burgundies Burgundy here on Minster so we get our diplomats back so all in all I think I'll actually end up annexing every battle that isn't a militarist because they are basically useless now and of course that is a hilariously annoying little fact more or less so I'll uh, re well reboot my army as I was about to say and once I've done that I'll get back here and we'll probably go for uh, find another war against the uh, the English we'll see how it turns out there we go the armies have been uh, well fixed and hopefully now I can, to some extent, solve the problem with, well, this. I'm a little bit unsure if I actually want to declare a war on uh, on Gascon or Avern here. I have no idea if I can actually vassalize them. I believe it's 20, that's the limit. 3, 6, 9. Yeah, I can actually vassalize them peaceful or brutally in war. And I think we'll do that. Brutally vassalize them and try to well, release as many nations as possible from the Frenchies here. 5, 8, 12... 
17, I should be able actually to actually devalue pretty near as well. That is kind of an interesting thing to note. Fair War, Holy War will just uh, cancel the military access, then we'll also devastalize these guys. Once again, we sacrifice some diplomatic points, but that is perfectly fine. You don't really have any use for a lot of these guys now. The uh, diplomatic points don't really matter as much as they used to, due to the simple fact that I will most likely have to mostly release uh, and then annex, it seems like. Savoy is actually still too big to be vassalized in the war, which pisses me off. But uh, yeah, it seems like the way you have to do now is do most of the construction yourself, which to me is a little bit con counterproductive. The vassal feeding was a big mechanic that was basically how you had to do it if you wanted to be able to spend points on anything else and grow. These guys are guaranteed by France, it doesn't really matter. France won't, I, at least I believe so, won't join in at all. At least I hope they won't join in, because if they do, then I might actually be toast. But yeah, we'll fight this war, we'll vassalize them. Frenchies did not join in, which is good. And with that said, we'll just get straight on to hopefully vassalize them. We'll see how it actually uh, actually turns up here, and I'll probably keep this phony war up for a while, simply due to the fact that I'll be able to recover my manpower then. But, while well, I have you here, my way of, well, sorting out the problem with the fact that you can't really vassal feed anymore, I'd probably try and solve it in... I don't know if I should put it another way, or... I don't really have to call it a smarter way. Basically, you have these nations that won't really take anything. I would definitely prefer it if you could force a force them to take a province, even if they're overextended. But depending on certain factors, they would dislike you. Basically, if they want a province, they'll get a little bit happy. Uh, let's say Overload gave us the land that we want, a plus 20, for example, have it for 5 or 10 years, 20, 30, whatever they really want. Or Overload force land upon us. Depending on how little they actually want it, if it's okay, then they don't really want it, but they don't really care if they get it. Probably just a minor, modify minus 10 or something, but if you force land on them that they don't want, well, they're extended, wrong culture, wrong religion, all that, they could get a modify up to minus 50 and it lasts a decade or two simply for the sole purpose of, uh, well, first of all, you'd have to some extent 104%. Wow. Probably goes down as a siege, I would presume. At least I hope so. But as I was saying, with uh, the vassal, basically, you can force one or two provinces onto a vassal and still be able to annex them if you don't really have any other negative modifiers. I would really like a system like that because it would make you actually being an overlord. Being an overlord isn't all, well, sunshine and rem rainbows, to put it that way. Do I want this? That's the big question. Do you have calls on Toulouse? I don't actually have calls on anything else. Hmm. I'm a little bit unsure how to solve this, but for now, we'll just keep the war going for the sake of the manpower, I think. And we'll see what we'll do. But as I was saying, I would really like an option to force land onto a vassal or anyone really, but at a very high cost in terms of uh, how well they like you. That would definitely be, uh, be worth much more to me. 3, 9. So it's 15 then. Yeah, it's probably 15 then. Damn it. Well, that sucks. I can't go for colonization. I can't go for vassalization. I would also prefer it if they actually increase the vassalization. Basically, um, two seconds, my phone is ringing. As I was saying, I would also like it if, basically, instead of a base tax cap on vassalization and annexation, I'd rather like it that I put it at about 120% or something like that. That basically you could vassalize the nation up to 120%, or set a hard, hard cap at 3 or 4 provinces. A country that's 3 or 4 provinces you can vassalize, for example. Because sometimes it doesn't really make sense that the city Lombardy here is actually too big to vassalize in its own right because of its high base tax. That is one of the more, more annoying things with this. I'm not saying that you should be able to annex Milan, or vassalize Milan as a whole. But even so, having a 30... Yeah, I guess it's 30 maximum. And then having basically cities that's half that makes vassalization in some cases a little bit annoying. The hard cap should go on provinces that 
basically what I'm saying here is that my hard cap or whatever you want to really call it should be going on provinces and only provinces. Not base tax. That is something I really, really like. Of course, if you have a you have to have a balance. If you have a turn of basically almost worthless provinces one twos here, you should be able to at least to some extent vassalize them. But it's, the system has its perks and it also has its downs. But for now, I don't like the fact that this is a three province country that I completely have taken. I'm big myself. I shouldn't have a problem keeping these three or this little country here as my vassal. That doesn't really make sense that I would have horrible, horrible, or basically have a horrible time trying to keep them under my control. Because I wouldn't really. I would just kick their asses and that's it. Of course, Robert de Valois here also become a diplomat. So, Scotland, you are unfortunately useless for me. I'm a little bit unsure how I would actually proceed here because it seems like in most cases I'll have to call everything myself. And as such, well, I'll most likely end up in future game. Future Games is taking the administrative ideas first for the core creation cost minus 25%. I'll also try and pick countries that would, well, make it easier for me. But for now, not really that much I can do. Kind of interesting for Morania here, but that's off the terms. I'll probably get my army to uh, to, um, to England here, and then I'll see what I'll do afterwards. But let me just say this. I do not like how the current system is. You get... Did I inherit Kaffa or something? Are you kidding me? Well, this sucks. As you can see, I actually got a promise that I didn't want. That is why this army suddenly appeared. I might have to release Trebisond here as a vassal. That is the hilarious fact. I should at least get a choice if I want to take control over a promise or not. But yeah, I'll have to bust that diplomatic cap even further here by releasing said Trebison as a vassal. So, for now, let's just end this by taking all their cash, force them to give Gascoigne to France, and we'll vassalize them. Potentially what I could do is just conquer a lot of land. Yeah, th this might have to be the way I'll have to do it in the future. Conquer a lot of land, allow them to get calls on that, and then uh, hand it back to France. So basically, I have to fight two wars to make something happen. I'll just take the cash and trade power, and that's it. So I'll be taking a lot of French calls here. Basically, sell a lot of, probably sell both Languedoc and Perigord to, uh, to them, hand them back to France, fight them, hand land back to France, break through, vassalize. Yeah, that's the way I'll have to do it if I want to have a reasonable and, to some extent, a good way of actually being able to handle this. It's not really... I, I can't really see any other way here. Basically what I'm thinking is that I conquer land. I don't core it myself. What I do is basically just um, hand it over to not a vassal, but a AI nation, because they'll always buy it, or at least always buy it, as long as they aren't actually, uh, actually in trouble, I guess I should say. See, we'll have Wales and Cornwall at least, so we'll go ahead here and the next Scotland as well, because we, we kind of must. So I'll be integrating these and then we'll do some more diplomatic actions once that is done. That is the hilarity. Again, but as I was saying here, what I would prefer is basically a system to some extent. Oh no, what I think I'll have to do here, I, I'm easily sidetracked, I do apologize. What I think I'll have to do here to actually make something like this work is that... As I said, it'll be a full war operation. First of all, I'll have to find the country and take lands that I want in this case. Let's say that I think take these four. Sell it to Averne, have them core it. Then fight Averne, have them hand it back over to France. Fight Averne again, vassalize them. Fight France, take the said provinces. And basically get a core that will be uh, he's hilariously expensive. Because you'll be breaking a lot of truces. It'll take hilariously long time if you do not break truces. So all in all, the system or that idea itself is hilariously bad. Let's just leave it at that. My idea isn't good, but it's the only way I can really see a solution, more or less, to what appears now to have become a problem. The coring costs themselves are annoying, but also the fact that you can't have... How should you put this? Overextension doesn't actually... Uh... Overextension doesn't actually... Yeah, I don't really know how to put this. 
Well, let me put this this way. The bigger the niche, the more of extensions you should be able to handle. If you could handle, let's say, as you can see, a Langdok, a 10 tax prominence is 40%, so 4% for base tax. If that will actually lower by your total base tax, then I would be fine with the system, because potentially then you could hold a lot of land and sell it when, when you feel like it. But as things are now, I have four or five provinces that aren't actually... Yeah, I have four provinces. And my country is apparently on the break of, well, going to hell as a result of that. Which in turn is quite annoying, to be honest. I like the way with the vassal system before, where you basically either converted, that, converted the country or a province. And if it was poor, they said, heck, you gotta keep it, man. We don't want it. But yeah, I did prefer that system. And Styria here is actually aggressive, so I'm really tempted to actually uh, actually use them to my advantage, but I don't know. Ah, I don't know anymore. I know what to do. I don't know why or if I want to do anything about this. Not really any, any ways to solve this, because the AR also is, of the ruler, very prone to changing how they, all, they feel themselves. So, as I said, I don't know. I have to check a little bit more up on this. I haven't really had any problems with it before this. So yeah, I'd really like it if you could actually influence at least the personality of your vassals, how force land upon them even, but we'll have to see. This is, these are my views. I might make a post on it on the forums or send... Uh, I'll probably make a post on it, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you have enjoyed my uh, long babbling. I know this is probably what you... Not what you expected, but it's what it became because not really much to do here. It'll be a lot of waiting in the future. I can't really see how anyone would do a world conquest here other than a lot of peaceful vassalizations and so forth. But we'll see how it goes. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. I do hope that you, even though I've been prattling a lot, do enjoy this. Bye.